Good afternoon and welcome to our last webinar in 2015. My name is Susanna Gurr and I'm the Managing Director at the BC Centre for Employment Excellence. For those of you who are not familiar with the Centre, it was created in 2012 with funding from the provincial and federal governments to act as a research and knowledge sharing organization for BC employment service providers and employers. The Centre's mandate is not only to do innovative research, but also to find ways to share best practices with BC practitioners and employers and better integrate evidence into practice. We created this webinar series as a way to reach out and connect with practitioners. Through this series, we have highlighted new research by the Centre, but are also tapping into the knowledge and expertise within the employment services community. You're invited to view the video recordings of previous webinars that we have posted on our website. The topic today is exploring career alternatives in the technology sector, and we'll be doing that with help from representatives from ASTTBC. ASTTBC stands for Applied Science Technologists and Technicians of BC. It is a regulatory professional association that certifies over 10,000 technologists, technicians, and technical specialists across BC. The technology sector is a relatively young sector in comparison to BC's traditional industries such as mining and forestry. It is a sector consisting of businesses that offer a wide range of services and products for customers and other businesses and is at the core of not only the technology sector, but almost every sector of the economy. We're going to start with a poll. I'm going to give you a few seconds to answer the question, and while you're doing that, I'm pleased to let you know that we will be providing remote CART communications access real-time translation once again for this webinar. To access this feature, click the link in the chat box or email you received today with the webinar link. Um, we're working on making sure the caption is also on the posted video recordings, and that will be coming up, um, not for this one, but soon. I also want to mention the Center's new podcast series called Innovate, Implement, and Inspire. It is available on the Center's website and on iTunes. In the first episode, partnering together in the employment program of British Columbia, directors at two organizations on Vancouver Island describe how they have partnered to deliver innovative employment programming. And now looking at our poll, the answer is 31,000 and over half of 52% got the right answer. ASTTBC is committed to um, collaborating with employment service providers from across the province to address the skills shortage. In this webinar, we're going to learn how ASTTBC is working with service providers to connect the clients with a wide range of employment opportunities in the technology professions that ASTTBC certifies. I'd like to introduce our two presenters from ASTTBC. Jacqueline Durat is the manager of executive initiatives at ASTTBC and has over 25 years of experience in the employment industry. During the tech boom, she was part of a management team that rapidly grew a small high-tech company from eight to over 60 multidiscipline professionals and in 1999 resulted in the third largest high-tech takeover in Canada's history. Since 1995, she has worked almost exclusively with engineers and technology professionals and most recently delivered a federally funded program integrating internationally trained engineers into the manufacturing sector and working for UBC's engineering co-op program. She holds a, B, um, holds a BA from UBC and enjoys delivering spirited, infectious enthusiasm. John Coward, our second presenter, has extensive experience in the employment services sector in BC for over three decades. He has developed and managed a wide range of award-winning federally and provincially funded employment programs and services. He has been a senior business consultant since 2010 and worked on a number of national and provincial initiatives and provide management consulting services for several employment services providers. Over the course of his career, he has served on the boards of directors of Aspect, the BC Career Management Association, and BC Work InfoNet. 
I would also like to add that John also has an infectious enthusiasm. <laughs> the presentation will last for about 50 minutes and will be followed by a final Q&A. You have great resources here and we really encourage you at any time during the presentation to use the questions feature on your dashboard to submit any questions or comments you may have, which will be facilitated by my colleague Greg during the discussion periods. I know the presenters welcome the opportunity to engage in discussions with you. And now it's my pleasure to hand the microphone over to Jacqueline. Thank you so much, Susanna. And it's a pleasure to be here to present uh, in conjunction with your organization. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Durat, and I'll be presenting uh, the main topic, exploring career alternatives in technology sector through ASTTBC. Uh, as it's stated in my, um, in my bio, I come to this with seven years of experience uh, helping to support the placement of internationally trained engineers into the manufacturing and export sector. So uh, I come to this kind of supporting you uh, and offering information about how I found ASTT to be very successful and supportive in supporting the integration of internationally trained professionals. So this presentation is intended to offer an overview of ASTTBC's uh, career opportunities for your clients and the services that we offer. So it, during the presentation, I'll be addressing a few things, who ASTTBC is, uh, why technology careers, what are the employment opportunities um, in the tech sector, where to begin, and how we can help. So ASTTBC is the Applied Science Technologists, Technicians, and Technical Specialists of British Columbia. We were created in order to protect public interest. Uh, we register and regulate technologists, technicians, and technical specialists in BC, as Susanna mentioned. We have roughly 10,500 plus members, and we're one of BC's largest professional associations. We're also known for addressing, addressing skill shortages, and that's one of the main reasons why we're here today and we're embarking on this uh, com uh, commitment and uh, uh, reaching out to communities throughout the province around a recent labor market information study that we did in conjunction with several other professional associations. And we're well known for um, corroborating with other organizations and working with them, collaborating in order to present information. So that's one of the main reasons why we're here. We also are strongly promote technology careers and education. Now, as far as uh, members of our organization, we offer uh, members um, uh, the fact that joining our organization offers opportunities of uh, networking, uh, mentorship, and um, career opportunities. There are other organizations that we've somewhat uh, involved with very closely and are linked to our organizations. They're affiliate, affiliated with ASTTBC, ITTP is an internationally trained technology professionals of BC that works in conjunction with us to support the integration of people from other countries that immigrate here and are looking to integrate into technology professions, as well as BC Women in Technology, an organization that offers uh, volunteering and mentorship um, and networking opportunities for women uh, it, with an intention behind increasing uh, the number of women that are involved in technology professions in the province. We also created a First Nations Career Council, which works closely with Aboriginal communities throughout the province, and our intention is to engage Aboriginal youth. Uh, currently, we're working with, um, in a, what sector is that, John, to engage uh, youth? Yeah, we're, um, we're working on a uh, number of partnerships to engage Aboriginal youth into uh, public sector work um, and uh, particularly in the north around training uh, Aboriginal youth to be able to work in their own communities 
uh, maintaining uh, and upgrading uh, the various water systems and uh, sewage treatment systems within their own communities. Thank you, John. There are other organizations that we uh, we work with. We have strong partnerships with, um, and a, so uh, Immigrant Employment Council of BC, Technology Education and Careers Council, which advocates uh, career uh, technology education in the province, Society of Internationally Trained Engineers, and a little quick shout out to my friend Casey Chow, which is listening to the webinar, who's a member of Site BC. I'll see you on Saturday at the presentation I'm doing for Site BC. Uh, Society of Punjabi Engineers, Technologists, uh, Speak BC, uh, we work closely with them as well. Association of Consulting Engineering Companies, uh, which worked in collaboration with us as well as APEG BC to produce the LMI study, Labor Market Information Study, that I'll be uh, addressing uh, later on in my presentation. So these are all organizations that we work closely with and that our members uh, have an opportunity to connect with as well as receive information about when they're uh, connected as members with our organization. So future outlook, technology sector, why consider working in the technology sector? And I don't, look, perhaps we just want to bring to the forefront some stats around what we're very proud of, uh, that how we contribute to BC's economy. So uh, technology sector is BC's second fastest growing sector after construction. Um, approximately 150,000 British Columbia has worked in high technology occupations. The technology sector produced $18.1 billion in revenues uh, with $2.7 billion derived from export revenues. The sector accounted for 5.9% of GDP in 2007 and, and significantly outperformed GDP growth in the overall economy. It is a current... It is a current and future key contributor to BC's growth. And um, what else? We, our members uh, include approximately 28 to 30 knock codes. And what I'll be doing later on is emailing everyone. I'm creating this sheet which uh, dis, um, lists all of the occupations that we certify. And it'll be a soft copy emailed to you later on. And when you click on any of the occupations, it will pull you to a NOC code, which will provide you with a description of the, the specific um, career as well as educational requirements. And as a, as a career counselor, I believe that that will be helpful in that you can either post it on your website or have it with you and allow clients to explore different career opportunities. So for example, under civil engineering, there might be three or four different NOC codes that we um, certify that as an engineering civil engineer with the previous background in civil engineering from another country would be able to click on one of these uh, professions and explore whether or not it might be uh, a, a technical fit for them given their previous education and work experience. But that probably I, I suspect you'll receive that in the next month or so. So this is the one of the key reasons why we're here today speaking to you. Just recently, over the last year or so, ASTTBC recently released, a, we've been uh, participating in a labor market study with um, APEG-BC, the Association of Professional Engineering Engineers and Geoscientists, uh, ACEC, the Association of Consulting Engineers of BC, and Asia Pacific Gateway Skills Table. And the bottom, I guess the, the uh, findings of the report was summarized that of roughly 31,000 job openings by 2024, 31 occupations, we, we looked into 31 different occupations, including engineering and uh, technology professionals. The study concludes uh, part of the solution to fill significant job vacancies over the next 10 years includes employing immigrants and workers who are new to the workforce, as well as workers that are unemployed. Um, and I'll be speaking more about that in a little bit. Uh, so this is a, one of the slides taken from the Asia Pacific Gateway uh, skills table presentation that we were partnered with. And what it does is shows uh, employment. So we explored three different investment scenarios. One was a, a low investment scenario. 
the second one was a, a middle um, moderate investment scenario and the other was a high investment scenario. So although all of the uh, investment scenarios showed a, an increased or a skills shortage for labor in the province, we're just showing you one here as an example, which is the moderate development scenario. So this is an example, this graph illustrates uh, the uh, labor demand over the next 10 years in the province to do with uh, the technology careers that we uh, explored. This is the labor supply, the yellow that you see in front of you is the labor supply. And the re this is the result of uh, baby boomers and people retiring and exiting out of our workforce. You can see the gap between where our demand is going and where our supply is going. The, the, the purple um, are the new entrants, so the new grads uh, that are uh, new grads that are coming from post-secondary education uh, educational institutions. Then this is the mobility. Uh, these are the people that we say, and I was in HR for a high tech company for six years. These are the ones where you call and you find someone in Alberta and you say, do you want to come over and work for us in BC? And they say, I have to spend a half a million dollars to get a small um, a, um, a, a small tiny house uh, anywhere in the lower mainland. No, thank you. I think I'll stay in Alberta. So obviously, given our housing prices and various other things, our uh, the the ability to be mobile uh, from province to province and the the draw that we offer isn't that high. These are occupational mo mobility people. So these are the ones that each of you might be in connection with that are. They come to see you, they've been laid off from a job, they're exploring other career opportunities, uh, they, they, they are, um, were working in a previous sector, they may have been injured and are now looking for different career directions. These are the people that, that um, I, we're focusing on with regards to you as individuals that you might come in contact with them and I'll speak further about that in a little bit. Can I go? Okay. Then these are immigrants that are coming from out of the province and are, are hopefully going to fill up the remainder and address the labor supply shortage. But you need to remember as well that even that green section that's above the supply line is still indicates a very tight labor market with a very low unemployment rate. So skill shortages within the province. So 31,000 new openings expected by 2024. Demand for new talent is higher than the output of currently of BC's post-secondary institutions. Youth, foreign trained workers and unemployed in the current labor force are three key sources to creating and developing a workforce to help address the skill shortages. So uh, this is an area where um, as ASTBC to support you in exploring career alternatives with any clients that you have, we contact, we spoke with um, all of our, a lot of our members and asked them, how did you know that you were a good fit or what makes you a technologist, a technician or a technical specialist with specialty? Why, why, what are some key characteristics that you have that set you apart from other individuals? So one of the things they say is that we're, all, it, it was unanimous in many, many people that we uh, question that were members, we're, if people are interested in, uh, our members are interested in how things work and, and working with their hands. Kind of, um, what do you call it, um, tinkers. They called themselves tinkers. I was always curious about how a toaster worked or the, how, how I tinker with my car or how did the vacuum cleaner work? And I was, when I was young, I was the one that could fix the, you know, the clock that broke in the house. So a lot of them are pride themselves and are curious as well as builders, people that would do um, large um, construct uh, ships, you know, um, what do you call them? The uh, large um, models of different things that when they were younger and build things and put things together. So they enjoy working with their hands. Using tools and equipment are another thing that so they're very hands-on. A lot of our members describe themselves as very hand, hands-on tinkering 
technology professional, doing simple calculations to prob problems, solve problems. So we find that many of our uh, members, as well as for our profession, there's a requirement to enjoy doing calculations, work well with numbers, and have strong math skills. And as well as working in various locations and settings, we find that a lot of our our uh, technical specialties, as well as some of the other professions, require that they visit different locations and have good customer service skills and are, have an ability to connect with different people. So I guess just to summarize from that last uh, slide, so that if a client comes to you, I guess this is the situation where I'm going to go backwards. So if this client comes to you and they say, um, you know, I've been laid off from my job. Um, I'm just not happy in my profession. Um, but I've always enjoyed using my hands and tinkering with things. Or if you could ask people, you know, do you like working with your hands? To really guide them in the direction of exploring possible careers with our association. Because that really is an area where, where we find uh, the pullover and the application and then the transition to us is really good because they people uh, say that yes I am I really enjoy I've always wanted to use my hands in my job more so the primary part of our association involves the accreditation of technologists and technicians so the ACTS the ASCT designation is a two-year diploma where a person would go to a place like a secondary post-secondary education institution like BCIT and receive a two-year diploma to become a technologist in one of the below disciplines. The CTEC is a 10 month uh, diploma from some place, a place like uh, BCIT where they can um, become a technician. The area where it might be applicable to um, clients of yours is that if they come to you and they have an engineering degree previous from another country that, and it's in one of the disciplines that we offer that there's a real opportunity, a potential opportunity for them to explore achieving a designation as a technologist or a technician in their same discipline as they had within engineering and then integrate in a technical way back in a, in a different way, but in a similar te technical way back into their uh, profession. And then another, another aspect of our association are the 10 disciplines that we, uh, the technical specialists that we offer. Um, the top one, two, three, four are uh, construction safety, fire protection, house and property inspection, as well as on-site wastewater. Now, a good example of an interesting transition career is construction safety. We've had some older gentlemen who have been in the construction industry for a long time, they have a lot of experience, but they're unable to do the physical labor or they've been injured in some way. And therefore, construction safety really speaks to them as far as it being very important. And they've just fit in beautifully and they have so much wisdom and they have so much to offer. And as older individuals, we actually find that they have a lot more to contribute than necessarily a younger 20 year old to go on site as a construction safety officer. So. Uh, we've just found this to be a really great integration point for some people that are uh, have a lot of experience and they're looking for a change in their career direction and yet they can still apply a lot of their previous experience to the job. Fire protection is a really exciting opportunity that we're um, that we're experiencing right now. There's a high demand. Uh, this is the um, presentation that I'll be doing at the Vancouver Public Library this uh, on. Uh, this Saturday for Site BC, and Casey Chow actually asked me to invite all of you, if you're interested or available, to come down and see the presentation um, regarding uh, fire protection. We're in conjunction with the provincial government. We've launched a pilot program to offer a seven-week intensive course to uh, uh, a language training course to train internationally technically trained professionals to integrate into the fire protection industry. And this was driven by industry, the demand was so high, and it's intensified program, it's at no cost, it's fully funded, we offer, um, we cover the person's bus pass. Now unfortunately the January 11th um, um, cohort course is already full, the demand is so high. 
Um, but we are offering another one in March, uh, which is still available. But we go through, it's a great integration point for people who have a technical background. And employers have said, once you achieve uh, one of the first designation, which is fire extinguisher technician assistant, the integration point is a, roughly a $15 an hour wage. And then as a person proceeds with their different, uh, achieving different design, uh, um, uh, um, different uh, levels of fire protection safety, the uh, end result is a potential salary of $80,000 a year, which is more than I'm making. And so I'm thinking of shifting my career to fire protection. But uh, if you're interested in more information about the fire protection, I'm happy to forward it to any of you or you're welcome to come down to the Vancouver Public Library to the Site BC meeting and uh, hear information that I'll be delivering there. House and property inspection, another one. Um, I use my house to test the house, the property inspection individuals. And the previous uh, group of them that came through were a lot of them were older, internationally trained engineers. And they were really excited about the opportunity to integrate back in and um, back into an area where they could use their civil engineering background. They had a bit of mechanical and electrical, a lot of experience on construction sites. And they said that they, they really were enjoying uh, accessing this career and using their skills in a different way to gain employment. I just want to go back to a little uh, happy story. We just received, oh, Sorry, I'm going to have to go back for a second. I just want to explain a little. Um... So with regards to fire protection, I'll, I'll show you a specific, um, a really quick, if you bear with me, just this morning we received an email um, from the woman, Erin Mikado, that works for my uh, organization. And she said, I have a registered fire protection who um, brought the staff a box of cookies the other day as a Christmas gift. He said to say thanks to ASTTBC. Um, he's working. He's working. At age six, I'm going to get teary. At age 61 and as an English as a second language, uh, getting a job has been very difficult for him. He first emailed me asking about the fire protection program in early 2014. He told me he was too old to go to BCIT and I asked why. I gave him information about the program and, and I said he wasn't too old. He was just afraid and to go for it. Since then, I've guided him through the certification process and he's taken courses and done well. He now holds three endorsements in fire protection and he's running his own company and is set to gain three more endorsements in the spring of 2016. Endorsements are different levels of certification within the fire protection. Uh, we all were so excited and there's all these exclamation marks as people email this back and forth to everyone in our organization and I just wanted to share that, that really great story with you. So this is one of the, um, this next example, this next slide is an example that of, we've created a number of online tools designed to support both uh, uh, pre prior learning and experience as well as foreign credential recognition assessments uh, to support one's job search. Technology Registrations Canada is an online process that uh, Individuals go online, they register an account, and then the, the, the software pack, package poses questions to them, guides them through responses, determines eligibility to become accredited through our program, through, uh, certified through our association, provides feedback and then recommendations on anything that might be missed in order for them to successfully go through certification and accreditation. And then at the end of it, it encourages applicants to uh, uh, contact us for certification. And when the person applies, we use the information within these responses to guide us through certifying them when they go before the subject matter expert um, boards. This is another um, first one in Canada that we've designed. We're at the beginning stages of it, and we're hoping to build, we're planning on, our intention is to excuse me, to build this database. Um, what the individual, what the individual is able to do is go to this website, put, put in their um, country uh, into the white search area. It'll pull up a map and it'll show you uh, how many programs within your country are accredited through our association. 
And then if you click on the one, you, the city that you're from, it'll expand and show you if your educational institution has previously been accredited through our association. As I said, this is a new um, database that we've created and we're building on it all the time. As an individual comes to us and we accredit them through their educational institution, we add their educational institution to our database so that we're constantly building on it. And our hope is eventually there'll be hundreds and hundreds of educational institutions. Another uh, initiative that ASTTBC is taking uh, to expand this website is the signing of mutual recognition agreements with uh, professional associations in other countries. Uh, we're currently in the process of negotiating one with India, another with the Philippines, and we're looking at uh, in South America with, with Colombia and in Europe with Poland. So as these um, uh, agreements are signed, all the institutions that are recognized in that country by our uh, comparable organization there, they will immediately be added to this uh, particular website. I just have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, so uh, Jacqueline and John, I hope you don't mind if we just interrupt for a second to can address just, these. Can I just pull this? Sure. Uh, it's, we've lost. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so we have someone asking um, about the fire protection program and if there are any plans to offer it in the north as of now. So that's an excellent question. Um, can my email address, so I, is this Jenny that's asking, asking or is it Mike Jones? Yeah, it's Mike. Mike, so Mike, oh. Hi, Mike. It's Jacqueline. So, uh, if you, uh, I'm happy, my email address is at the end of it, and if you could please um, email me, and 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 we'll explore that. And I'll I'd like to to it, this is a pilot project, so it's we're in the very preliminary stages of of launching this, and it's a, we're only in our first cohort, our very first classes being, and and as the success of this program is monitored by the provincial government. I suspect there'll be an opportunity for us to offer it in the north as well. That would be my intention, but we are in the preliminary stages of delivering it. But I'm, I would really like to be able to contact you and be in touch with you. So when my email address comes up at the end of this, if you could email me directly, then I'd like to have your contact information so that moving forward, we could address that. Great. That sounds wonderful. And the, the second uh, question that came in was about uh, occupation in particular. And um, she's asking what the difference is between an electrical work practitioner versus an electrician. Is one more entry level? Electrical work practitioner. So my, I think that was one of the occupations. Technical specialists. Maybe listed on one of the previous slides. So um, I can't, I mean, so I can't, I can't go into the, uh, a lot of times electrical work practitioners move into an area that also connects them with the software, some of the software that is associated with and, and, and involved in some of the programming as well. Now, if once again, if when my uh, email address comes up at the end, I would be happy to, um, and as well as provide all of you with information, and I can email a document that shows a breakdown of both knocks and what the two job requirements are for both of them and a comparison so that you have a, a really thorough understanding of the difference between the two. Um, I, it would, it's too detailed to go into detail right now, but I'm happy to provide that with you if you just contact me after the webinar is done. Great, thank you. And that's all we have for now, so I'll just encourage everyone to keep sending in their questions and uh, we'll, we'll get some more questions later. That's me. Okay. So another aspect of an offering and a, an area of support that we offer um, is a tech jobs online job posting service where see, job seekers can find employment opportunities in the tech sector. Uh, they are required to be registered with us, um, but it is an area where our members have access to job opportunities where the employers 
um, ask for uh, registration with our organization. And then another area that we've created on site is a, a career section of our website. All of you will be emailed this um, PowerPoint presentation afterwards and there'll be hyperlinks so you'll be able to connect with these different areas of our website um, and support your clients with accessing these areas. So also in addition to that, um, as in a, a um, Skills BC and as support to Skills BC offices, Work BC offices, their areas will be offering, uh, ASTTBC staff are offering one-to-one -one support, either face-to-face -face email or by telephone, depending on where they are in the province, uh, to either case managers or individuals requiring uh, support in that uh, direction. Job coaching, either uh, while they're on the job or um, through mock interviews or whatever is necessary to support them with their specialized integration into a specific technical um, career, as well as accessing mentoring opportunities, connecting individuals who certify through us in outer, areas outside of the Lower Mainland specifically would be valuable uh, if we found someone who is a member in that same city or town who is in the same designation or discipline that they are that could offer support with them as they explore this new career. So additional um, ASTTB services is, um, would you like to speak on this, John? Yeah, we're uh, establishing partnership agreements with Work BC centers. Uh, Ten have already signed up, and we're in negotiations with six more at the present time. And part of the agreement includes staff training workshops, uh, providing uh, case managers with current labor market information on the technology sector. And we're offering uh, uh, services under uh, EPPC billings for PAR and for credential uh, assessments, as well as uh, support uh, uh, workshops for clients to give them the opportunity of exploring career options, particularly for clients uh, who are looking for alternative careers, who are transitioning from one type of job to uh, a new career, uh, and uh, as well as, as young people who are looking for new careers, uh, and, uh, and internationally trained professionals who just haven't been able to find alternative career pathways into the Canadian labor market. And so we're willing to provide these workshops either face-to-face -face or online. And then part of the service option also includes job search and job development and job maintenance support services. And before, so I look forward to working with each of you to create positive employment outcomes for your clients. And I. I realize I neglected to bring up one. Um, I was speaking with our registrar uh, the other day, and, and I was asking him, I said, you know, we, we focus in the direction of internationally trained engineers and the transition from uh, registering with us and then obtaining, uh, integrating into a technical career, which is a big was a big motivator for me because uh, working on EMAP, uh, it, one gentleman in particular, he registered with ASTTBC and he wasn't integrating as a, an engineer, registered with AT, ASTTBC, uh, gained a job at a, a really great company. Then they started to see how he, uh, his capacity to contribute was beyond what his job description was. And they eventually started to ask him to report to a PNG once a week. And he successfully PNG'd um, back in his chosen discipline uh, successfully just um, six or eight months ago. And he sent me an email. He said, Jacqueline, I PNG. I'm like, yay! So, so that's a really great example, I think, of someone who comes from an engineering background, integrates through registering with us, and then eventually uh, PNG, if that's their desire. But my registrar really wanted me to, to bring to the point that there's an opportunity for people who are more in the trades, someone who's been in the trades for many years and has a great deal of experience 
um, as one person mentioned, as an electrician, and perhaps they've injured themselves or they're getting, uh, they just feel that they're unable to do the heavy trades, potentially physically demanding part of their job, and they want to transition into something that through our PLAR, our prior learning experience and assessment, uh, individuals are able to to register with us and really take into consideration all of the previous experience they have in the trades and allow that to be contributed through uh, towards certifying and registering with us as well. So it really can go both ways. It can come from an engineering side as well as from a trade size and meet in the middle and offer a career alternative that I think is very exciting and viable. So, and before I go, I just wanted to tell you a really quick story. How are we for time? We're okay. Yeah, lots of time. Okay. So, um, my husband is an addictions uh, counselor. He works with high risk offenders in a residential program out in Abbotsford. And one of his core uh, philosophies is that, um, uh, and part of my intention in saying this is that, as all of you as care, um, case managers and career practitioners, his belief is that when a person is experiencing a very traumatic and dark part of their life, the connection and the support of one key individual at a time where they're experiencing darkness and trauma can have a significant impact on the outcome of the event. And I just wanted to really acknowledge the respect that I feel for each of you and the work that you do and the importance that you do in every day dealing with your clients and how you seeing them as whole and capable and being their cheerleader and their support person is so vital. And uh, like my husband said, often we don't realize how that support at a key point in their life can have a significant impact on the outcome. I remember while supporting my internationally trained engineers, one of my engineers disappeared and wasn't connecting with me and I reached out to him and finally he came to see me in the office and he said, you know, I've come from a completely darkened room in my bed. I'm medicated. I'm depressed. Uh, he was sobbing. He said, my wife doesn't speak English. I have two small toddlers. I have a reverse mortgage on my house. I can't return to my home country because I've, if I do as a failure, I'll shame my family. I have nowhere to go. And I said, you can't leave me now. You have to stay. And I, you have to stay with me. And and stop listening to your monkey brain. I call the monkey brain is up in your head all the stories about I can't do this, I'm a failure, I'm, I just uh, I can't go anywhere with this, if there's no way out, to kind of really following your heart and your gut and your will and your courage and just pulling that all together. And I really stressed him staying with me and I was so pleased that eventually he integrated into a manager's job for a, a specialized um, food waste company and he's really happy now. But I really want to stress the respect and admiration that I have and acknowledge the importance of the work that each of you do every day. So thank you so much for taking the time to come to this webinar. It was my pleasure and if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them now. Great. Thank you uh, Jacqueline and John. We had one more question come in during that last section of the presentation. And I, I, I'm quite certain you answered it, but maybe you'd like to elaborate a little bit more on some of the services. Someone's asking uh, services about services that are available to unemployed youth. So, um, so it seems pretty clear that they, there are, that they are, but maybe you'd want to talk about um, working in uh, services for youth uh, a little bit more. So I think that, um, you know, some of the areas that we focus on do require returning for uh, returning to school post-secondary level to for a, an education, either the CTEC for 10 months or two years for a diploma program through BCIT. And yet I realize that is unreasonable for many, potentially many, many unemployed youth. Now, the area where I believe it's quite accessible um, is excuse me, with our fire protection program. So I would, um, if you look on our website, if you click on our website and scroll down, there's a button under one of our technical specialists, which is uh, fire protection. Now the very first course that is required, and it's offered throughout the province, I'm pretty sure, um, is uh, a fire extinguisher technician. And it's a 15-hour course, uh, two days. They offer it at BCIT. Now, if this particular youth is um, 
somewhere else. Once again, copy down my email address and, and I will endeavor to connect you with a service provider that's closer to your youth. But if they're interested in this sort of thing, this 15 hour course, two days intense on a weekend, would allow them to take the very first step into fire protection. Um, it just what it is, is they become certified to test um, fire extinguishers that are required by law in all buildings. And that uh, they would be a, a year as a mentor under a certified technician, and then eventually they would gain their certification. And that's the specific job that um, entry level position at $15 an hour, uh, which is a little bit hands on and technical and would allow them to start to um, earn endorsements over time. Um, and the one that eventually would potentially lead to an ADK um, career. But that first um, entry point is a, is a doable uh, short course that I think is potentially explorable. And um, from the last time I looked requires uh, simply a, a grade 12 uh, graduation in order to take your very first course. In another direction around that, um, as all of you know, Canada is going through sunny ways right now. And uh, the new federal government has promised a significant boost in funding for skills link programs under the youth employment strategy. And ASTTBC is looking for partners across the province. And if organizations are interested in putting forward an application for a skills link program, specifically in some of the technical specialist areas, uh, the one that Jacqueline just referred to in terms of fire protection, but also in public works. There are entry level positions in municipal governments, public works, and there will be big push by the federal government for employers to be hiring these young people. There are going to be incentives around it, et cetera. If you're interested in developing the, one of those types of programs in your specific community and you need a good partner, a, a partner from a regulatory organization with, employee, with employer contacts, ASTTBC is the type of organization you want to partner with. We're taking a very activist approach towards a workforce development strategy, not just job strategy, a workforce development strategy from youth right through each one of the specialized populations. As, as uh, Jacqueline indicated in the slide, we're already working with uh, organizations around women into technology, aboriginals into technology, and we're, we're looking at partnerships uh, to get persons with disabilities into uh, technology occupations, which they're suited for. And uh, so again, with, with regards to young people, if you're interested in a partner around that, ASTTPC is open to that partnership. Thanks, John. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, we had another question come in, and we, it's funny, we were just discussing uh, amongst us before the presentation started, we were wondering uh, how many folks would be sitting in from uh, uh, jurisdictions outside of BC. And we have a question from someone in Ontario asking whether there are maybe, a, is, there, is there a similar association or uh, similar services available there, particularly in the GTA? There certainly is um, an association uh, counterpart to ours in Ontario. I'm not familiar with the programs. They're, they're certainly not launching this in conjunction with us. Ours is as a result of this labor market study that we did in conjunction with a few other associations. So I'm not familiar with that. But once again, if you copy down my email address, I'd be happy to, to connect you with my equivalent um, from OSET in Ontario. Um, it's uh, what exactly that stands for. Uh, uh, but I will, I, uh, if you, if you um, copy down my email address and send me an email, I'd be happy to connect you with my counterpart in Ontario with the technologists and technicians. Ontario Association of Certified Technologists and Technicians. There you go. There you go. Okay. Yes. And they're also a part of the MRA that we're currently developing with India. They're going to be part of the uh, uh, organizations. Pan-Canadian, uh, it's a pan-Canadian initiative. So in, includes uh, uh, professional organizations from Alberta, Ontario, Manitoba, etc. Okay. 
Wonderful. Uh, it looks like that's all the questions that have come in. And uh, we're, we're going to wrap up a few minutes early, but that's okay. So I just want to let everyone know about the next webinar. Uh, we did move this one from November to January, so it's upcoming in the new year on the 19th. You know what? We had one more final question come in. So how about <laughs> before I uh, talk a little bit more about the webinar, uh, we'll ask, we'll, we'll answer this final question, and it's. Uh, asking if you can comment on the ASTT BC partnership with Skills Canada BC and their presentations in schools and communities promoting the technology sector. I'm not familiar with that. I'm, not, I'm not familiar. actually not okay. familiar with that. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. Uh, we should be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to the webinar. Uh, it's on translating Aboriginal transitions to employment. And uh, we're really uh, looking forward to this one. It's in the new year on the 19th, and it's going to be uh, an extended one of two hours. Information registration inf uh, will be the link. Sorry, will be available soon on our website, and it's going to be in the follow-up email as well. Um, thanks to John and Jacqueline today for your presentation, and of course, thanks to everyone out there for attending. The session was recorded as usual, and we're going to post the video of the presentation on our website. We'll send you the link in the email within the next week. As always, we welcome your input and feedback, and we would also appreciate any suggestions you have for future webinar topics. Our next webinar, as I said, is scheduled for the 19th. We hope you can join us for that. And that ends our event for today. So on behalf of my colleagues, uh, Susanna, here at the center, uh, and our presenters, we would uh, like to thank you for participating in today's discussion. Have a great afternoon.